In this video, we will learn about the relationship between the focus, directrix, vertex, and axis of a parabola, and the equation of a parabola. Now in the past, we've learned about parabolas, where we know the shape of a parabola would look like this, so kind of like a U, or an upside down U. And we've also learned different things about this shape, where it's created by a quadratic equation, such as y equals negative x squared. Now in this lesson, we're gonna take a more in-depth look of parabolas. So to begin with, we want a more formal definition. And the definition of a parabola is the set of all points equidistant from a fixed line called the directrix, and a fixed point not on the line called the focus. Now what does this mean? Well, here's a picture of a upside down parabola. All right, we see the vertex right here at two, three. This point is the highest or lowest point of the parabola. And then we have this point here beneath it. This is called the focus, and it's at the point two, zero. And then we see this horizontal line up here at y equals six, and that's called the directrix. Now what this definition says is that if you pick any point on the parabola, so here we see point P, we'll call that uh, x, y. If you take any point here, for example, the distance to the directrix, so the vertical distance to this directrix up here to point x, comma, six, and then to the focus down here at two, zero, that distance will be the same. And it doesn't matter where we go on the parabola, if we pick any point, the distance to the directrix and that focus will always be the same. All right, so like we said here, the focus is at the point two, zero. The directrix would be the line y equals six. And as we mentioned, any point would be the same distance to the focus as to the directrix. All right, and we mentioned as well that point B, X, Y, or sorry, P, X, Y is a typo, is the same distance to the focus as to the directrix. Now take note that the vertex here is gonna be halfway between the focus and the directrix. Now that's important as we progress to realize the vertex is the same distance to the directrix and the focus. Now, when you are working with equations of a parabola, all right, so parabola is represented by a quadratic equation, to develop this, okay, let's take the same picture that we had, and we said that the distance from P to D up here to the directrix would be equal to the distance from P to F, the focus. So we can use this relationship to create an equation. Now we can use our distance formula to develop this equation. All right, so um, we can do, um, so we can subtract the x values of P and D. So if we look at P and D, subtract the x values, we have x minus x, and then we square that plus, and then we subtract the y values of p and d, so you have y minus six, and we square that, equals, and then pf, do the same thing. So p and f, we have x, y, and two, zero. So we can subtract the x values of p and f, so we have x minus two, and then square it, plus subtract the y values, y minus zero, or just y, and then square that as well. And we see that all typed up right here. Now we can do some things with this equation. First off, we can get rid of the square roots by squaring both sides. When you do that, the square and the square root will cancel out. And you're left with what's underneath. So you have x minus x squared, which by the way would be zero, right? Because x minus x is zero, squared would be zero. So you have just y minus six squared on the left side. Then you have x minus two squared plus, and then y minus zero squared. All right, and then we can uh, multiply things out a little bit. And let's focus specifically on the y minus six squared. So if we were to multiply or distribute the y minus six times y minus six, we square the first term to get y squared. You square the last term, negative six squared is 36. Then you multiply negative six and y and then double it. That's the shortcut. And then we'll leave the x minus two squared here for a moment, and then y minus zero squared, we mentioned already in the, uh, previously, it's gonna be just y squared. All right, so we have this. 
and we see that typed up right here in the notes. Okay, so now we want to rearrange things a little bit. So if we bring this y squared right here over to the left side, we do that by subtracting y squared. When you do that, it's going to cancel out. So you're left with negative 12y plus 36 equals x minus 2 squared. But let's also bring this 36 to the right by subtracting. So we're going to get negative 12y equals x minus 2 squared minus 36. And then one more thing is we can um, get y by itself completely by dividing both sides by negative 12. So when you do that, it's the same thing as 1 over negative 12. So you put 1 over negative 12 here in the front and then divide this by negative 12 as well. It's going to give you y equals negative 1 12th times x minus 2 squared and then negative 36 divided by negative 12 is plus 3. Now we showed you this because we want to um, illustrate where this formula or equation comes from for a parabola. And this process can be used to find the equation of any parabola with any uh, focus and directrix. All right, but now our objective eventually is we want to not have to go through all of this to get our equation, but we want to figure out what are relationships that we have between maybe the vertex and the focus and directrix. How can we use that information instead to just quickly get to this equation as opposed to going through this entire process? Now, before we do that, let's point out one thing here, give you one example, and this is with the focus. So if you're told that the vertex of a parabola is negative 4, 3, and the directrix is y equals 6, and you were told to find the focus, now what would your focus be? Now when you do this, um, uh, you can maybe plot this on a coordinate plane here, just to kind of visualize what's happening. That's always a good idea if you're not sure where to start. But the vertex is negative 4, 3, so you go to the left 4, and then up 3, 1, 2, 3, that takes you right here. That's your vertex. And the directrix is y equals 6. So that would be up 3, 4, 5, 6 right here. So that's your directrix. So with this information, uh, we know that the parabola is going to have to open down, right? Because it's not going to cross over that directrix. It's going to go the other direction. So it's got to open down. And there's your vertex. Your focus is going to be beneath it. All right, now remember we mentioned that the distance um, from the vertex to the directrix and the vertex of the focus will be the same. So we can use that information to find the focus. So to get from here to here, um, we can count or figure out the distance in the y's. So um, the y is three here at the vertex and it's going up to six for the directrix. So that distance would be a three. All right, we can do the same logic to get from here uh, down to the focus. We have to now subtract 3 from that y value. So if we subtract 3 from y, so 3 minus 3, that would give you 0. So we actually have to go down here to the, to the axis. And your focus would be right there at negative 4, 0. And we see that illustrated here with a better looking graph. Um, so the focus is at negative 4, 0. Now, also take note that this distance from the vertex to the directrix, or the vertex to the focus, that distance of 3 is denoted by the letter C. So it might seem kind of random at the moment, but we're going to use that letter here in a little bit to figure out an equation of a parabola. All right, so remember the, uh, the distance from the vertex to the focus, or directrix, is the letter C. Now, we mentioned we want to find the relationship between the equation and different parts of the parabola. That's what we're going to do here in this next portion of the lesson. So here we see if it's uh, solved for y. So we have y equals, and then we have a times x minus h squared plus k, it, where a, h, and k are just some sort of number. It could be like 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 4. It could be any numbers there. Now. The letter A here in the front, this is equal to 1 over 4 times C. And as we mentioned, C is that distance between the vertex and the focus and the directrix. 
All right, so we can use this relationship uh, in a little bit uh, to find the equation or to write an equation given, let's say, the focus. And then um, here we see a picture. All right, so this kind of illustrates what we're talking about. Here is just a parabola in general. All right, so here is your vertex here at h comma k. And that's important to realize that the h and the k would give you that vertex. So whatever is with the x here gives you the x value in the vertex. And whatever's out here um, is going to be, in this case, the y value. And just take note that the number in parentheses, you have to change the sign. All right, so if it's a negative number, you make it into a positive number. If it's a positive number, make it into a negative number. All right, so we have the vertex. And then from there, we can use our C value to find the directrix and the focus. All right, so if we add the C value to our Y, so like here, the vertex, if we add C, that would take you up to the focus. So if we add C to our Y value, so we take the K and we add C, that gives you the focus. All right, and then if you subtract C, so you do uh, K minus C, that brings you down to this Y value, and Y equals K minus C, that would be your directrix. All right, we see that typed up right here. And then your axis of symmetry, okay, the line cutting down the center of the parabola, okay, it's gonna be a vertical line like this, and that's represented by X equals something. And because it goes through the X value on the vertex of H, okay, that's gonna give you the equation, X equals H. So that's the equation of the line. So if the vertex was like 3, 5, for example, um, H is 3, and the equation of the vertical line would be X equals 3. So this is the relationship when you have Y equals something. Now, if it's X equals something, it's very similar in relationships. Uh, so if it's X equals, and then A times Y minus K squared plus H, if the equation looks like this, a would still be 1 over 4c, where c is the distance between the vertex and the focus. And here's a picture where if x is coming first, notice how it's opening to the right or to the left. So if it's like this, where x is first, it's opening in the x direction. So like left or right. Okay, that's the x direction. Whereas when the y was first, so like y equals something, is opening in the y direction, so either up or it's opening down. All right, but the relationship between A and C is still the same. The vertex will still be H comma K, but take note that the, the Y value in the vertex is found by looking at whatever number is here with the Y value in the parentheses. All right, but you still take the opposite. So whatever's in parentheses, you take the opposite. So it's still gonna be the opposite of that to get your y value. So if it's like a negative number, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes a negative. And the number out here by itself in this case will be your x value because it's not with the y, it's going to be your x value. And that's just going to be a regular number. So if it's a positive 10, it's going to be positive 10 for the vertex. All right, and then uh, your focus, we can see that the focus is going to be to the right or to the left of the vertex. In this case, it's opening to the right, so the focus would be to the right. All right, so the x value is changing in the focus. It's not going up or down, it's not shifting in the y direction, it's shifting in the x direction. So you're gonna have to add something to your x value of the vertex, and you're adding c, because that's the distance from the vertex to the focus. So you're adding c, let me see that right here. We have h plus c that we're adding um, for that x value. And then again, the y value would still stay the same. It's going to be k, whatever that was. All right, and then um, you have your directrix would be subtracting c from the x value. So we're going here to the left to find this directrix, this vertical line, which we see in orange. So that x, that, that equation would be x equals and then h minus c. And that's where the x, x or that, uh, that line, the vertical line is going to be. It's crossing there on x, where x equals h minus c. And then your axis of symmetry, this 
a line cutting down through the center of the parabola. It's going to be a horizontal line, so it's going to be y equals something. And where it goes, how high up it is on the y-axis, is going to be whatever your k value is. So whatever y is for the vertex, like the vertex uh, was at hk, so if this was like 2, 4 for example, k is 4, so this vertical line is at y equals 4. So whatever that y value is, that's going to be what you set y equal to for this equation. And it's also worth noting that uh, for both of these equations, so for x equals or for y equals, that the a value will also determine which way it's opening. So um, here, if it's a positive a, when it's x equals, it's going to open in the positive direction for x, so opening to the right. That's the positive direction when you go to the right. Whereas if this was a negative number, so like negative a, like negative 3 or negative 1 fourth, it's going to be opening to the left because that's the negative direction for x. So if you go to the left, that's the negative direction. And then for y equals, so if this were y equals something, and then you have an a number in the front. So if it's y equals, it's going to be opening up or down. But if a is positive, so if a is positive, it's going to be opening up. Whereas if a is negative, it's going to be opening down. All right, so that's the negative direction uh, for, for y, is opening down. So that's worth noting as well as we progress. So using these relationships, we want to get some practice with this. And here we're given parabola y equals 1 over 16 times x plus 3 squared plus 5. And we are to find the vertex, axis of symmetry, focus, and directrix. Now first off, um, it's y equals. So it's going to be opening either up or down um, in the y direction, okay? because the y is first, opening in the y direction. And then 1 over 16 is a positive number, so it's going to be opening in the positive direction for y, which would be facing up. So it's going to be facing up, and we can find the vertex right away by looking at these two numbers, the 3 and the 5. So the 3 is with the x, so we can use that to find our x value for the vertex. But you have to change the sign from a positive to a negative. Whatever's in the parentheses, you have to change that sign. All right, so it's a negative 3, and then the 5 is going to be your y value. So your vertex is at negative 3, comma, 5. So let's try to sketch this out a little bit to help you visualize what's happening. All right, so the vertex is at negative 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right up here and it's going to be opening up like this. All right, so this is what your graph's going to look like um, just in general. And the axis of symmetry is the line cutting through the center. It's a vertical line, so it's going to be x equals something. And notice it's at the, the value of x equals negative 3. So your axis, axis of symmetry would be x equals negative 3. Now to find your focus and your directrix, we need to figure out what is our C value. Okay, so we need to find C based off this equation. Now remember we said that A is equal to one over four C. We mentioned that relationship earlier. So we can use that to find, to find our C value. So this number here is your A number so 1 over 16 is equal to 1 over 4c. So to find c, if we look at the denominator, the numerators are the same. So it's going to be 16 equals 4c. So divide both sides by 4, c would equal 4. So c is 4, which means to get to the focus, we would have to go up 4. And then to find the directrix, we'd have to go down 4. So we have to go down this way to get the directrix. All right, so if we go up 4, okay, our y value is changing. So we have to add 4 to our y value of the vertex because you're going up 4. So that would take you to negative 3, comma, 9. And the directrix would be subtracting 4. So that would actually take you down to here if we count it correctly. So your directrix would be down here. So if you subtract 4 from your vertex, 5 minus 4 is 1. 
So it goes through that point, y equals 1, and that's your directrix. That's the equation of that line. And over here on the side, we see a much nicer graph of what we just discussed, where this is your parabola. Here's your vertex. Your focus is up here, like we said, at negative 3, 9. And your directrix is down here at y equals 1. Let's try another example. And in this case, we have x first. So we have x equals, and then negative 1 eighth times y plus 1 squared minus 3. And we're trying to answer the same questions. All right, now first off, it's helpful to kind of get an idea of what the graph is going to look like. So because we have x first, so we have x equals something, is opening in the x direction. So it's going to be either opening to the right or to the left. Now the question is, which one is it? We can tell that based off the negative here in the front. Because it's a negative number, it's going to be opening in the negative direction for x, which is opening to the left. So it's going to be this graph up here. It's going to be opening to the left like this. All right, so it's going to look something like that. Now to find the vertex, we can do that really quickly by just looking at this equation. So this number here is with the y term. So it's going to be giving you the y value of the vertex. But whatever's in parentheses, you always must change the sign so in this case, it's changing from a positive 1 to a negative 1. And this negative 3 would be the x value. So your vertex would be at negative 3, comma, negative 1. So let's sketch this to help you visualize what we're doing here. So we have negative 3, negative 1 is your vertex. We said it's opening to the left. So something like this. And from here, we can find our axis of symmetry because it's going to be this line that's horizontal through the vertex. And it's going uh, through negative 1. So your equation would be y equals negative 1. That is your axis of symmetry. That's the line cutting through the center. All right, and then to find the focus and the directrix, we need to figure out our c value. All right, so to do that, okay, we can look at this number right here. Because remember we mentioned that that number is equal to 1 over 4c. So the negative 1 eighth is equal to negative 4c. And the negative we can put down here with the 8. So we have negative 8 on the bottom and 4c on the bottom. So we can solve that. 4c equals negative 8. Divide both sides by 4 c would equal negative 8 over 4, which would be negative 2. So c is negative 2, which means that to find the focus, we have to add negative 2. So the focus would be in here, and we have to move it over two spaces. All right, so that's two spaces over, and that is to the left, so our x value is decreasing by 2. So this negative 3 here from the vertex, we're decreasing it by 2. So we subtract 2 to get negative 5, comma, negative 1. So that takes you to the focus, negative 5, negative 1. And then to get to the directrix, we have to go uh, this direction, too. So we have to subtract uh, negative 2, which means basically we're adding 2. So we're adding 2 to the x value of negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 would give you negative 1. So it's actually going to be right here. So that directrix would be right here at x equals negative 1. And here we see a nice, a much nicer picture of that graph. You have your vertex, your focus, the axis of symmetry is this orange line, and the purple vertical line, that is your directrix. All right, so we've learned how to interpret an equation to figure out how to graph. Now, we want to be able to put into graphing form if necessary. So all those equations were, were already in the correct form for us. But there's times when you must put it in that form first. And that's what we see right here. So to do this, what you want to do is you want to see which term is not being squared, all right, or which variable is not being squared. So we see the y is being squared, so we're, but the x is not. So what we do is we want to solve this equation for x putting it in the format of x equals a times y minus uh, k squared. 
and then plus h. So something like that. So to make this happen, we want to get x by itself. But it's actually maybe a little simpler if you just get the, the y's together on one side. Because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to complete the square to make the y's into a perfect square trinomial. So to do that, let's bring this negative 8x to the right side by adding 8x. So we get a positive 8x over here. And then let's bring this negative 3 to the right by adding 3. So that gets rid of that. And so we, what we have is y squared minus 6y equals 8x plus 3. So this is one approach for doing this. We could leave the 3 on the left side, but it might make it a little more confusing for you. Because what we're doing now is on this left side with the y squared, we want to make this into a perfect square by adding something to both sides. So to do this, okay, remember we've done this in the past, where we look at this middle term, we take half of it, which is negative 3, and then square negative 3 to get positive 9. So you take half of this middle term and square it to get this number here. So we get a plus 9, but do the same thing on the right side as well. So we have a plus 9 on both sides. All right, so this left side over here, we're assuming at this point you can factor. You know how to factor, we're hoping. And when you factor on this left side, we're going to get y minus 3 times y minus 3, or y minus 3 squared. And then 3 plus 9 on the right side would give you 12. All right, and then from here, again, we want to solve for x ultimately. So we can bring this 12 back over to the right side by subtracting. So if you subtract 12 from both sides, that brings it over here. And then we can divide both sides by 8. Make sure you divide every term by 8. So this divide by 8 or multiply by 1 8th, same thing. Divide this by 8 as well. And what we have is x equals 1 8th times y minus 3 squared minus, and then 12 over 8, you, you can reduce that to get negative 3 over 2. So now it's in the correct format, and now we could answer those same questions we did in the previous uh, two examples, where we find the vertex, and we find your focus, directrix, and axis of symmetry. So we'll let you try that on your own if you want, and um, because we've already seen two examples of that, but this would be the putting into graphing form. Now one last thing to finish off this lesson and that is going backwards and if you're given information such as the the vertex or foci or um, or the directrix we want to be able to find an equation from that information. Alright so here we are trying to find an equation of a parabola that has the vertex at 4 2 and the directrix at y equals negative 3. Now to kind of think through this, it's helpful maybe to, to graph what we know. So this is going to be helpful, I think, for most people. So if you, direct, if you um, graph the directrix y equals negative 3, that would be down here at negative 3. So this horizontal line, okay, this is your directrix. And then the vertex is at 4, 2. So that'd be over here at 4, up 2 at this point. So from this information, we can tell right away which way it's got to open because it's not going to cross over the directrix. So when we graph it, it's going to have to open up like this. So what this tells us, because it's opening up, um, and I guess we'll go right here. Because it's opening up, we know that A is going to be positive. A is going to be positive. And we know that this equation is going to be Y equals something. All right, because it's opening in the Y direction, up or down, it's going to be Y equals. And we know the A number is going to be a positive number. And we see that typed up in the notes right here. And even though it's crossing over the words I'm going to leave it for now because I want this picture to remain for this next part. All right, so with this being said, we know we want to use this form of our parabola equation where you have a times x minus h squared plus k. All right, so the h and k we derive from this vertex here at 4, 2. All right, so the 4 and the 2 
uh, that gives us the H and K where H is going to be the opposite of this number. So that's going to be a negative 4. And the K, your Y value, is going to be just this number by itself, just the 2. So what we have is A times X minus 4 squared plus 2. Now to find the A value in the front, this number here uh, in the equation, we want to use the fact that A will equal 1 over 4C. All right, so remember C, that is the distance from the vertex to the directrix. So the vertex is here, directrix is down here, and that distance we can count or realize that we have to figure out the difference in the y values. So if you look at the y values of 2 and then negative 3, that distance we find by subtracting. All right, so if we subtract 2 minus negative 3, that's 5. We could count that to get that same number. So c is going to be 5. So we have 1 over 4 times 5, or 1 over 20. And that's your a value right here. So your final equation would be y equals 1 over 20 times x minus 4 squared plus 2. So in this lesson, we've learned the relationships between the vertex, the focus, the directrix, the axis of symmetry, and how to um, graph all of that. And we also learned how to write an equation from that information and how to find that information based off the equation. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.